Well, hello and welcome to Sunday Encore, where we have candid conversations about the practical applications of Sunday's message. Well, hey, we're back for another episode of Sunday Encore, where we sit down, recall the truths of Sunday's message, and consider some practical applications to our everyday lives. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If this podcast has been an encouragement or blessing to you, we would encourage you to share it with someone. Send them the link, send them the, sh- the uh, show or the episode, give us a five-star rating, comment, like, whatever it is, wherever you watch or listen to on whatever platform so that we could continue to reach more people with the hope of the message of Jesus. As always, I'm your host, Spencer, and across this wonderful table, I have my co-host, Adam, and we are here. We're here. And we're ready to go. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Well, I don't know about beautiful, but we're here. It's Monday <laughs> It's morning. Monday morning. <laughs> Monday morning is one of those, this is the day the Lord has made. I will I rejoice. will rejoice. I will. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some Mondays are beautiful when the sun's shining and the birds are chirping. Other Mondays, as we get into the late fall, early yeah. winter, it's, it's like, like Monday. It's gloomy. It's, it's a little Monday. cloudy, a little gray. Thank the Lord for coffee. Time change yesterday. It was like oh, yeah. literally five o'clock and it was getting dark. Dude, I woke up at like 3.50 and I couldn't go back to bed. And it was the longest day. Oh, just because you were life. still in time change mode. I just, but just last night, like Wendy and I, we were, you know, we set up our Christmas tree yesterday. Nice. Which, you know, I love the look of it. But anyway, we're at, we're in Christmas mode, but it was like five o'clock and it was like, why is it dark outside? It was so dark. Absolutely wild. And so, yeah, now we're in the reality where it's dark, and now we're going to be, you know. You drive to work in the dark, you and go you home come home from work in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, it is a season. We embrace it, and uh, we lean into Thank it. Thank the Lord for seasons. Seasons come, seasons go. Yes. Yeah, that's good. We had an incredible uh, morning in church yesterday for Mission Sunday. So many different pieces, but it was such an awesome morning um, just to see all the different things that we are doing around the world um, and being able to partner with and what um, God is allowing us through um, giving to him and through what that looks like just to actually make an impact in the world around us, not just in what we can see totally around us. Yeah. Like I think that's really crazy. I think, I think one of the things that I just, I love communicating to our church is that as a leadership team, as a board, as a staff, as partners of our church, we've committed to making sure that we're investing back into the kingdom, mm-hmm. a minimum of 10% that comes into our general offering, which allows us to give, you know, 50000 40 to $50,000 away every year. That's amazing. In partnerships with people who are doing things that we can't do on ourselves, right. right? And so, you know, having Pastor Zoe here from Village of Hope in Zimbabwe, obviously we can't, Huge. he's doing something that yeah. we can't do. <laughs> Literally. You know, with 100 percent, and so um the fact that we're able to i think he even mentioned it because you know we moved i moved here just two and a half years ago you're you're here just over just a year almost coming mm-hmm. up the next month um so we never we never in- initiated these relationships i think i think uh the village of hope started about five years ago i think he was saying yesterday we've okay been, we've been partnering with them for about five years which is beautiful, That's you know, legendary. and just being faithfully and con- consistent yeah. year after year. And, and as we're able to increase those uh, investments and, and hear about the impact they're making as mm-hmm. they're feeding their community, they're doing community initiatives mm-hmm. and feeding programs. Yeah. And they care for students yeah, and, community and schooling, schooling and uh, those kind of things. As you just hear all that, they're church planting, they're raising up leaders. I was hearing stories of how their students that were sponsored and through their education program are now going off to universities and they're getting jobs that are, are are sufficient enough to even now care for their siblings yeah. or younger siblings and their family beyond themselves and and how they're actually seeing the change that's taking place yeah. not just spiritually which is obviously the biggest change that we care for, we really want to see um but but physically like mm-hmm. they're taking care of their home and their kids and their families yeah. and bills are being paid and and they're actually setting their kid, these kids up for successful yeah, living, which um, which is beautiful. And so I, th- I love that we get to celebrate that. So the, yeah. ha- the fact that he was in the country, uh, he reached out and said, hey, I'm going to be around. would love to come and share. Um, and he was with us, I think it was a year, two years ago or a year and a half ago, he came and preached and he did a great job. And mm. so we, 
we let them loose and we just officially made it a mission Sunday. We weren't really planning for it again, yeah. but it just sort of happened. And totally. But um, yeah, he preached. He preached a great message on Absolutely. sonship, on yeah. embracing sonship, which kind of fit within the theme that we were navigating for the last really three months or two mm-hmm. and a half months, two months. And so, yeah, that was great. What was, was there a thought that he said that kind of was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, totally. Like I loved the whole message and I loved how it just naturally fit in like embracing our identity. It was right. just a different facet of it, right. which I thought was beautiful how the Lord just worked that out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think, I think the one thing that stuck with me from his message was um, he had this reality of the son and the prodigal son in Luke 15 he took his inheritance right. um, and left um, and is this reality where he took the resources from his father, but actually left and was disconnected from the source, his father. Right. So he took the resources, but was disconnected from the source. And when you're not connected to the source, your resources quickly deplete right. and run out. Um, whereas as a son, as a rightful son operating in your true identity when you're connected to the source, not that we do it for the resources, but they never run dry. Right. We have new privileges, new promises, new opportunities, new rights and responsibilities, all these things, the resources that we get as like that every spiritual blessing right. um, only comes from when we're connected to the source as a child of God. 100%. Which I thought that was like, wild and so what a good. great thought to, to mine in a little bit because i think a lot of us think we have enough we have everything we need to live a life of godliness we don't mm-hmm. need the church we don't need other believers we don't be connected in small groups we don't need you know even and, and we and we disconnect ourselves and and in the initial the initial steps it kind of feels okay because you have this abundance that of resources that were given to you right right but because there's no inflow it eventually run dry. And that's yeah. what G- that Jesus talked about in John 15, right? He says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Apart mm-hmm. from me, you can do nothing. Absolutely. Like, you can't produce the fruit apart from me. Yeah. You know, you, you may have moments of kindness or moments of joy or yeah. moments of goodness, but you that's not sustainable yeah. apart from me. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, what a great, I love that idea we talked about, you know, you have the rights as sons and daughters, we have this, we have the rights. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of us love sitting in the rights part. It's like, true. Oh yeah. We're, we're King's kids. You yeah, know, yeah, look at yeah. all the authority we have and the totally. rights we have and the opportunities we've been given mm-hmm. and the, the blessings we're able to receive from God because we're connected to him as our source. But very few of us look at the responsibilities part and realize, Oh no, no, there's a responsibility of this too. Yeah. Of not just what we need to do for others, but how we need to behave and mm-hmm. act and represent the father and, represent the household and yeah that's good and so i think he you know he he leaned into that i thought that was really beautiful yeah me too um so yeah i just again i think if you were watch if you're with us i'm sure you had a great time if you didn't i want to encourage you to go watch it online yeah and re- and just kind of receive from him it mm-hmm. was it was just great to have him there different voice but a, fa- a friend of the family he's yeah. a friend of the house and so yeah. uh that was great yeah but one thing i thought would be so i got something in my mouth <laughs> um weird um, I thought it'd be kind of cool if we, uh, j- you know, take a quick moment to just kind of reemphasize kind of our our call to missions, our mm-hmm. our commitment to missions. You know, absolutely. You know, our mission is missions, really. Like we're, we're called to make a difference. And yeah. now one of the things, so we our mission statement, if you were to call that, this the why we exist. And if you've been around our church long enough, you you've heard this before: is to lead people into an overflowing relationship with Jesus. So mm-hmm. everything we do is anchored in this idea that we are leading people into not just a growing relationship, but a growing relationship that leads to an overflowing relationship. Right. Meaning you are going to be filled so full that Jesus overflows through your life mm-hmm. and through over your life, and actually makes an impact in the world. And actually makes an impact. And the overflow effect is not. For you, the overflow effect is for those around you. Right? Exactly. Like when a cup overflows, it means it's already full. Yeah. The cup's good. It's the satisfied. Cup's good. It's satisfied. It yeah. has everything it needs. And in fact, it has more than it needs. Yeah. And so the overflow is actually impacting the things around it. Exactly. Right? And um, and so really the question then in that mindset is, well, what's the overflow effect mm-hmm. of my life? Mm-hmm. And as individuals, as a follower of Jesus, I have a responsibility. What's the overflow effect of my life and where mm-hmm. God places me and positions me and gives me opportunities? 
but then also as an organization, as a yeah. community, as a as a corporate, as a local assembly, what is our overflow effect? Like, what's mm-hmm. the impact we can make mm-hmm. collectively? And um, and so we've we've kind of narrowed it down into this phrase of wanting to see Jesus centered community transformation, which yeah. which I know isn't a super measurable <laughs> effect, but we do want to see change. We want to see Jesus centered change. We want to see an overflow effect that actually makes a positive gospel centered. Jesus focused change, right? Mm-hmm. And we all know that sometimes spilt milk makes actually a mess. The overflow effect can sometimes be a mess. Mm. And we want the overflow effect to be life giving, mm-hmm. right? And positive and mm-hmm. Jesus centered. And so we've kind of narrowed the language around that as far as lanes or focuses on protecting the vulnerable, mm-hmm. helping those out of poverty, and planting life giving churches. Mm. And so when we talk about initiatives in our own community, when we talk about uh, partnerships nationally, or when we even think about partnerships globally, mm-hmm. like Village like of Hope, Village and, of Hope yeah. in Zimbabwe, they are doing all three of those. They're things. doing all three of those things. Yeah. We're like, okay, how do we resonate when, when, because you know, the the, the need is is uh, there's no shortage of need. Yeah, and we have people who are serving. People are receiving a call from God and serving all around the world in the in the highlight, but yeah. also in the shadows. Yeah. And they are doing the Lord's business. And we can't be all things to all people, and hmm. nor can we partner with everything that's going on because right. that's just, it's impossible. Yeah. But the question we've that's been asking. That's why we're part of a body. That's why we're part of the body of Christ. Right. So, what is our unique call? What is yeah. something that God has put on our heart that we need to focus in on as a local church? And so, we've focused that down as saying protecting the vulnerable, helping those out of poverty, and planting life giving churches, mm-hmm. which again, those three laneways have a lot of leeway. Mm-hmm. Like when you talk about protecting the vulnerable. Yeah, what does that mean? Like that's a lot like? of people. You can talk about children. You yeah. can talk about those in slavery. You mm-hmm. can talk about, um, you know, even seniors and, and citizens, senior yeah. citizens. Like totally. the vulnerable is anybody who has lacks the control over their own life, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're a subject to somebody else, mm-hmm. right? So, and then when you talk about poverty, what does it look like? What yeah. it talks about planting churches. And so, that's what we're committed to, and so we're gonna we're gonna lean into that. And I think we're on we're on the front side of this, where we have this like we're naive enough to believe we can make a difference, but we don't really know what that actually fully looks like. Yeah, yet. you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, okay, God, you've given us these laneways. Now, what what does this look like? Mm-hmm. How do we prepare ourselves? What relationships do we need to build? Double down on, lean into. Totally. How can we serve more than just giving our finances? Is there something you're asking us to not just to to do with our hands, actually, mm-hmm. to put some, you know, roll up our sleeves, especially when it comes to our local community, like yeah. even in the Gray Bruce or in, in, in Cardin area. Like, you know, we want to support national organizations that are planting churches and, and raising up church leaders. And sure, we want to do that. We want to support the missions around the world, like Costa Rica and in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, in Spain that we're supporting with the Williams. But, you know, is there something we can actually do physically? Mm-hmm. You know, and I th- and I think that's the, those are the questions we're asking right now. Yeah. And, you know, when it comes to when we look at our own community, when we talk about the vulnerable in our community, we yeah. look at those who are struggling with poverty in our community. When totally. we look at the fact that I believe the local church mobilized is the hope of the world. Like, mm-hmm. how can we mobilize the local church, and how yeah. can we support the local the work of the local church? Understanding that the local church is God's tool mm-hmm. for his spirit and presence to be revealed it's mm-hmm. the hands and feet of the of, of the body of christ mm-hmm. right and so how do we navigate that and so you know we are just sitting and having these kind of big dreaming conversations about how we can actually make a difference yeah and um i'm grateful that we have a church that when we talk about this kind of stuff mm-hmm. people get excited absolutely which is a beautiful thing. And yeah. now the question comes down to what do we do with that excitement yeah right? yeah totally so we are we're working we're trying our best to create systems and and not so much so much how to's because i think we're working through this together but more just like hey we have a plan we know where we want to go and the question we're asking is like how well how do we get there yeah yeah (laughs) you know hey we know where we want to go how do we get there and so we're really leaning into people who have yeah expressed a passion for totally missions absolutely a, a passion for outreach and maybe even you're listening to here and you're like i have a passion for missions i have a passion of making a difference in our community, well, let us know. Reach out to us. Um, Absolutely, you know, let, like you don't know, stand up. Hey, let your let your voice be heard. Yeah, and so that we can connect you to the right people and put of you in course. the right room. Because um, I think this the only way this is going to work is when we all do our part. 
you know, exactly. talk, going back to the idea that we're connected to a body. Oh, we all 100%. have a sense of responsibility, right? Yeah. And when you feel that, like when we talk about this stuff and you're like, oh yeah, this dream or this vision or this excitement or passion in your heart comes up, that's not just like a cute thought. That's the spirit of God working in you and in, in revealing what he has designed and created you for in maybe your specific niche in the body of Christ. And, um, obey that and listen to that and actually make that known because that is how you experience that abundant life. That's how you experience the overflowing life is when you actually give and overflow yeah. through what is in you, what what you're passionate about, what you can give to, what God has designed and innately given you gifts for and those kinds of things. Yeah. Just do that. 100%. When you feel that, do that. And that's the question. The, the big question is we pursue our relationship with God is like, okay, God, is this thing you're asking me to do? Is this just something you're asking me to do? Right. As an individual or as a family? Or is this something you're saying, hey, this is something I've positioned you to do within the larger community? Mm -hmm. You know, and it could be both and. Yeah. Or it could be one or the other, right? Yeah. Sometimes God gives us something to do. It's like, hey, that burden is on me because he's asking me to do it. Totally. You know, not me to dump it on somebody else. Yeah. Right. So we had to be obedient to those kind of discernment. But um, but yeah, I just think there's I think there's people in our community. I know there are people in our community, I've talked to them. That when you start talking about you know, protecting the vulnerable. Yeah. Or you start talking about helping people out of poverty through whether it's helping with feeding or caring for totally. them or, or picking up groceries or dropping off meals or, you know, giving them resources and training. Yeah. Um, they get excited. They light up. And so the question I, you know, as a leader is like, well, how do we get these people in a room so they can do it together? You know, totally. how do I connect them to the right people in our community? So instead of we're not reinventing the wheel, but partnering with organizations that are, community that are already doing it and yeah. we can just amplify and accelerate the exactly. mission that is already happening exactly and um and so those are the things that we're dreaming about because mm -hmm. i we've said this before we don't believe we're the church in the community we yeah. believe we're a church in our community totally. we're, we're part of our community and god has given us a unique personality he's given us unique passions he's given us unique gift sets and a unique vision and we have to sit within that understand that we're going to serve alongside one another and yes. so um yeah, I, I, I get excited. So what our missions is missions. Like missions mm -hmm. is our mission. Like yeah. that's, I mean, the overflow effect. I, I mean, when you talk about discipleship, um, you know, I, I believe the, the fruit of discipleship is missions. Mm -hmm. Like the fruit of discipleship is evangelism. The fruit mm -hmm. of discipleship is, is the overflow effect. Mm -hmm. It's the go and tell. Like, yeah. I mean, you can come and see, right? You can follow me. Jesus invites us to come and see, right? Experience him, like get to know who he is, mm -hmm. follow him, like grow in who he is. But then go and tell. Mm -hmm. Like you need to go and do something. Yeah. You know, go and, and make so, disciples of all nations. Go and make disciples of all nations, and that's the that's the call. And I think at some point, if you aren't going and telling, if you aren't, if there isn't an overflow effect of mm -hmm. your life, I think the question all of us need to evaluate is: Okay, why? <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> why? why? So why? Why not? If if I created a lid, have I put a, a blockade to that? Right. Or am I just not full enough? Yeah. Am I just have I just sort of given up and I've had enough? Just there, there's something in my cup, and but I'm not really growing into that. I'm not to the point where I'm actually giving it away. Yeah. And so how does that? What does that look like? And how do I pers how do I humble myself every day? Pursue the relationship with Jesus and just walk in obedience to the Spirit's Absolutely. leading. Absolutely. And I think if we can just commit to that individually and collectively. I mean, we're going to see missions grow. So I I'm excited. So I'm I think excited. I think we're in a cool spot right now and yeah. grateful for Pastor Zoa and mm -hmm. grateful for our church family as they faithfully contribute and serve and give through the local church how we're able to make a difference, not just in our own community, but li literally around the world. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So it's amazing. Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, thanks for joining us for Sunday Encore today. We pray that this sparks Jesus-centered conversations in your home or small group as we continue to grow into an overflowing relationship with Jesus.